guys, I recently started a business for my side hustle, so I thought I'd talk a little bit about that experience, why you might wanna make your side hustle into a business, all of that good stuff. So if you're into that, stay tuned, and if you're just here for the programming stuff, feel free to click away. So for a long time, my side hustle actually did not make any money. And when it doesn't make money, it's a hobby. I made YouTube videos, I would sometimes do some client like dev work for some companies, and like that was pretty much it. Of course, over time, as you start creating content, working with various companies, it starts to generate revenue, which is great. And I started generating multiple income streams. So once you kind of add all that up, over time it becomes pretty substantial. Now once you substantially start making money from your side hustles, does that mean now make it a business? Maybe. Now before you make an LLC, which is making a formal business, there's a couple things you wanna know. First, you kinda need to stay in the same city and state depending on how what your taxes are. If you move from like New York to LA to Philly to Washington, whatever it is, like you have to re-register your business in that state and it's a really big pain. So that's why I waited for a significant period of time to actually formalize my business. I just kept moving from place to place and the amount of headache it takes to kind of change addresses for your business because your business does have to have a formal address. It just didn't make sense. So you want like a substantial location you're gonna be in for say, you know, two to five years. Another reason you might wanna make your business is it protects you legally. So if you work in a space where people sue each other a lot or you think you might get sued, it protects you legally so that if someone sues you, they'll sue the business, not you personally. So your business could lose everything but you personally, if you have a house, you would keep the house, that sort of thing. It really separates your business assets and your personal assets. This wasn't the main reason I made the LLC, but it's kind of a nice perk. Anytime that you make money and you are not working for a company, so like for YouTube or for any dev work I help on where I'm not an employee of that company, then I am self-employed. That means I have to pay an additional 15.3% tax towards Social Security, towards Medicare, towards all of that good stuff because I'm employing myself. You might be thinking another 15.3%, like what? Why am I paying more taxes? And this is actually something you already pay as an employee. So if you work for a company, the company you work for pays half of that 15.3% and then you as an employee pay the other half of that 15.3%. If you're self-employed, you are the employee and the employer in a sense and so you have to pay that full 15.3%. Now expenses, what does that mean? So expenses are things you can write off the income from your business. So if there's something that you need to buy in order to do the business activities, then you can write it off your income and say that was an expense of the business, it was a necessary and reasonable expense that we needed to write off and we needed to buy. So if I'm a YouTuber, I make money on YouTube, I buy a new camera, that is absolutely something I can expense because it is something I do in order to make the business profitable or really to make the business operate in general. You have to be able to record stuff, like if you break a camera, you need to go buy another camera if you want to continue to make money creating content. Another thing and this is actually a little surprising if like if you're recording yourself if there's any hair or makeup that is done and for the video itself and so I go buy blondie bites if I dye my hair like now it's not super blonde because we're in quarantine we can't leave our houses but when I get my hair done and I get it blonde and I do a video that can be expensed because it's Blondie Bites, it's my brand. It's a reasonable and necessary expense in order to uphold the brand. Now you might be thinking, well, why don't I just become a YouTuber too and expense everything I can? Well, you can only expense things that are reasonable and necessary, so you can't go buy a $10,000 bottle of champagne and be like, ah, oh, that was a necessary expense. I needed it in order to be ready to make the YouTube video. Like, no, that's not it. Your YouTube video also has to show the intent of making income which is very hard to do if it does not make income initially. If it doesn't make income, it's considered a hobby. So I could make YouTube videos as a hobby, but now that it generates income and it's an income source for my business, now when I'm making YouTube videos and stuff, I'm working. And so those are expenses I can write off. And when I write it off of the business, it means that I'm lowering how much the business profits, and so it's less taxes I have to pay. 
Now my business, it's Blondie Bites LLC, so it is a formalized business. It has its own separate bank account, which is something you can do with an LLC. You can get your own EIN number, and you can do the expenses, and anything you need to buy, or anything that comes into the business, you can keep it in that separate bank account. But as an LLC, anything that happens with the money, you put it on your own personal tax return. And so all of that, if you do not have it as an S Corp or as a separate tax entity, like LLC is only a separate legal entity, it still goes all on your tax return and it's your individual tax return and your LLC is kind of tied to that. Now I have an LLC, but I've classified it as an S Corp. So I do a separate tax return for my business, for my S Corp, and then I personally do my own tax return. I won't go super in depth into the differences between just being an LLC or being an LLC that's classified as an S Corp for tax reasons. But the reason you might want to do that is if your business is small, so I'm the only employee of my Blondie Bites LLC company, that should be a thing that's happening. And your business should profit. You know, it's going to depend on who you're talking to, but many say if it's profiting at least 50 to 75 to 100K, it might make sense to do the escort because of certain ways you can pay yourself and keep the money with the business and continue to grow it. You can pay yourself dividends. There are certain things you can do special with an escort. I can do a whole video on that and like why you would want to make it an escort. This is more just a business in general. So the first thing you would do no matter what is create the LLC and then later on you can decide, okay, do I want the escort tax? classification. We can talk about that in a separate video if you guys are interested. So now that you kind of know if you would want to make your business into an LLC, if you're the right candidate for it, if that makes sense, if you think it would be beneficial for you, I would recommend you meet with an accountant. There are websites like LegalZoom out there and there's, there's other ones like it. But I personally think it is 100% worth it to meet with an accountant that you have a personal relationship with. Again, ideally you're gonna stay in that same state and you're not gonna be moving between states. If you can find an accountant that you can trust and talk to and maybe they do your personal tax return too and you can really understand what's going on with your taxes, like that's gonna help you save as much money as you can. To be able to ask them like, hey, is this a reasonable expense? Or, you know, hey, I got paid in this way and I'm not sure which year should it count towards 2020 or 2021, they will definitely be able to help you with. And they will also be able to help you understand, does the S Corp make sense for you? Does the LLC make sense for you? And a lot of times the consultations are free. To have an accountant create your business for you, so to register your business and do all of kind of the legal things that need to be done in order to make your business a business, it cost me about $500. Now this $500 is actually an expense to my business so I can write off the profit of my business but for me that ability to ask questions about my personal tax situation and my business's situation absolutely helped me legal zoom it's kind of a few buttons and all of a sudden your business is created and you don't really understand why or what happened like legal zoom can't give you any legal advice ironically and any specific tax advice or anything specific to your business and it's still gonna cost you if you do this if you do the like small smallest package it's like $99 but if you do the big package Package, it can be up to like $300, $400. And at that point, it's like, you know what? I'd rather go with a person I have a relationship with and support a small business. Also, the way my accountant talks, <laughs> Also, the way my accountant talks about taxes is like the same way I talk about programming. So if you can find someone like that, they're gonna set you up for success. 